Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Geo for Non-Gurus, where today we'll be talking about a heavily requested topic from our only subscriber, Mr. Carroll. The South China Sea Conflict The South China Sea Conflict is one that has been constantly changing over the past few years and involves many different countries. However, before we get into the nitty gritty of it, let's talk about the location. The South China Sea is in the Southern Hemisphere and contains 56 different islands that are owned and claimed by six different nations, including the Republic of China, People's Republic of China, Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. The island, the area is surrounded by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, and Borneo, who all have coastlines which overlap with the ocean. The ocean is heavily used for trade, with hundreds of ships passing through the area every day, carrying valuable foods and resources that are on their way to many foreign countries. The islands are also a heavily heavy area where lots of fishing happens. For example, in Australia, lots of rice that comes from China and India often comes through the South China Sea. The main reason for tension and why countries are willing to go to war for it is because the islands have major positive impacts such as their geographical location, their natural resources, including oil, gas, and obviously fishing, and their geostrategic importance, which for the non geo gurus out there, is the importance of the location if a war broke out and other factors. They also, it was also really good for trade routes and has access to many other places. These factors are the main cause, however the more recent debates have been exacerbated by both China and USA, who are unhappy with each other's involvement in the area. As you can see in this image, it's pretty confusing. The first part you need to know about the conflict is that it is such an important issue that the foreign that foreign countries such as America are starting to get involved. The basis behind this is that the Chinese badly want the area and have gone through many hurdles over the years to get there, even if it means breaking the law. The more important part of the conflict is before that when it was first discovered that China was building artificial military bases, like the one seen in this image, UNCLOS, which stands for the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, established a legal framework in 1994 that intended to balance out the economic and security interests of all surrounding nations. This was all at peace, however, it was discovered that China was trying to militarise the area, which is when America got involved. This puts us at around 2015, however, we will talk about this more later. An important part about understanding the conflict involves understanding the different perspectives of the war. There are many different perspectives of this conflict because of the variety of countries involved. However, I'm going to be splitting it up into three different parts, the Chinese, the other Asian countries, and America. First of all, the Chinese perspective. The Chinese believe that because of their geographical location, military power, and even the name of the sea are all reasons for them to believe that they own the area. In reality, the Chinese aren't actually that close to the sea, and there, may, and there are many other countries that are much closer. However, after realising its economical and geostrategic geostrategy imp strategic importance they have done all they can to try and claim the area including building their own island which is used as a military base the country's control of the islands wasn't noticed by the world for a long time up until recently despite this the islands have previously been under china's control as long ago as 3rd century bce when they were major power in the land they controlled the sea hence the name it was also at this time that people like Ducletian, the 54th king of Rome, was in power, and the world map looked like this. You can probably see that the world has changed a bit since that time. However, after a few centuries of the Chinese dominating the area, it was then decided that the islands would be evenly spread out between the surrounding countries, which up until recently has been a calm resolution to the problem. The next perspective is the Asian countries, who up until recently have been happy with their involvement in the islands. They were happy to share the land until they found out about what the Chinese have been doing to try and take control of the land. So they now want more land and want to, n want to stop China claiming new islands. In particular, countries who are competitors with China, such as Japan, are also trying to step in to help in order to try and not only have equality, on the islands, but also to stop China from becoming too powerful. This group isn't heavily involved in the conflict and is more just spectating in a sense because most of them don't have enough political power to influence China, so they're just sitting back and supporting the outcome that they want to support. 
Lastly, the American perspective. The Americans are major competitors of China in many aspects and will probably continue to be for a long time. It's to the point where the relationship has been characterised as a second Cold War, showing where the heart of this conflict is. America's involvement in the conflict involves them trying to stop China from becoming too powerful in that area, as they think it could threaten them through the power China would get from obtaining the sea. For this reason, they've begun to show the world and China what the Chinese have been doing to try and stop them. However, they are not just looking out for themselves, as they are also trying to prevent the conflict and give countries even territory to a certain degree. However, that comes as a result of their original intentions of stopping China. The main thing that started the US involvement was back in 2015, where they showed the world what the Chinese were doing, which led to the two countries agreeing to what was called the US-China Summit. This involved China agreeing to stop militarization of the air. However, in February the next year, China did exactly that. While the issue isn't resolved yet, the questions everyone is asking is what will happen next and how many likes and subscribes will I get on this video? Now you may be wondering by now what has been done to try and resolve the conflict and the short answer is very little. Apart from the US-China summit and some other agreements that have been signed by China with other world organisations, the other way that the conflict has tried to be resolved is by the American involvement as they do have slight intentions to solve the issue and give equal land to everyone. However, that comes as a result of their original intentions to stop China from becoming too powerful. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe so we can have more suggestions and video ideas in the future. Hope you enjoyed another episode of GeoGurus for Non-Gurus.